Hi, and welcome along to Transfer Daily, the show that takes a look at uh, players that have been linked with a January transfer move to Arsenal. Window is going to be shut in very, very soon on the 2nd of February. And it's great news that Arsenal have got another deal done. We've been waiting almost a week um, for this deal to get over the line. We all knew that um, it was a strong likelihood of it happening, subject to a work permit. But the deal has been done. And Gabriel Paulista signed for Arsenal yesterday. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of excitement around about this um, player. And it's, it's, it's very, um, very strange, actually, because I don't think a lot of Arsenal um, fans out there really know a lot about Gabriel Paulista. But what it is, we so know that we've been desperate for so long for a backup Centre back. That the fact that we've signed one and we spent a lot of money on him, and uh, um, he looks the part. We're all really excited to see how he's going to play. And um, he's come in yesterday. He signed. He's made all, all the right noises since he said he wants to be. <clears throat> excuse me, like the the new Martin Keown um, says that he recognises that Arsenal are a massive club and he really wants to perform well at Arsenal and. It's really a signing, as I said, um, quite unusual. That's got all the fans excited because, um, as I said, fans, are, I, I think they just wanted that centre-back to come in. We all knew that it's such a desperate position to fill and Arsene Wenger's filled it. Shame he didn't fill it in the summer, but he's filled it now. And it makes us a bit more optimistic going forward now for the rest of the season, knowing that if anything does happen to Koscielny or Murtasaka, we've got a genuine centre-back who can come in and play there. And we're also told that he can also play on the flanks as well. He can play right back, he can play left back. So he's going to be a very good addition to the squad. And if he's as combative as I've seen in the video clips, etc., we really look like we've signed ourselves a good player. I mean, as I said uh, the other day, Villarreal uh, were looking at him and calling him like the new Godin. Now, if he's anything like uh, Godin who plays for Atletico Madrid now, then we've got ourselves some player. But it's great to see that Arsenal have finally signed a centre-back. Um, Joel Campbell, of course, went the other way um, to uh, Villarreal. And uh, that's done as well. We knew that was actually done before uh, Arsenal um, signed Paulista or uh, Arsenal announced Paulista and um, you know it's it's again um, he's been also signed a new contract with Arsenal so it looks like Arsenal are saying one or two things here they're either saying to him go over there um, play football prove yourself and come back mind you he's done that before but they're telling him to do that um, because we have signed you or is the reason why they've signed him because they're just trying to protect themselves that if they want to sell him in the future, the, um, they've got a player that they've got tied down to a contract so they can get a good price for him. Um, either way, it's good for Joel Campbell. At least he knows that he's fairly secure for the future. He's not going to be out of contract or anything. So a good deal for Joel Campbell and a good chance for him to go to a good team in La Liga and prove himself and then be able to come back to Arsenal. Another player that signed, we've been signing everyone over the past couple of days, but um, another player that signed for Arsenal is the captain, Mikel Arteta. He signed a, a one-year extension um, to his contract. His contract, of course, is going to be running out in the summer. Well, he signed a one-year extension. Um, some fans were looking on this a bit negatively and saying, you know, well, that means it's another year of Mikel Arteta in that defensive midfielder role. We should be going out there and buying that player. Um, I don't know. Mikel Arteta has been a good um, leader at the club. I think he's a good player to have around. He's a very experienced player. When he comes in, he can do a job. I think it's probably be more Flamini will go in the summer and then they will have a look at that defensive midfielder position. I suppose it will all depend on how um, Coquelin performs from now till the end of the season. But Mikel Arteta signed an extension to his um, contract and he will be remaining at Arsenal. Now, the interesting um, question turns to who are Arsenal going to sign next? Who is next on Arsenal's radar to bring in? And we keep hearing about one player in particular that Arsenal are interested in bringing in. I'm a bit surprised by this player because he's like a left back. But 
in Spain. They're really raving over this guy. And he goes by the name of Jose Luis Gaya. Um, Gaya plays for Valencia. In Spain right now, he is one of the hottest players around, hottest prospects. Uh, no, um, no surprise that uh, Real Madrid are also very, very interested in him and, and are looking at him hard at the moment. He's got a buyout clause of £13.5 million. Pounds. Um, Valencia said to want more. They want about 17 to £20 million. Pounds. And as I said, Arsenal are very interested in him. A lot of reports going around that he could be the next player that Arsenal tried to bring in in this January transfer window. Um, Real Madrid, as I said, also very interested and a host of other clubs, including um, some of the Italian giants. So could Gea be the next signing at Arsenal? That's what we're going to have to wait and see. As I said, the window is going to be closing on the 2nd of February, so not long now. But Gea um, is a player that they're looking at. And also, of, um, we spoke about this one yesterday. The rumours have been hotting up even more everywhere on every media outlet. I suppose it's going to be because he's such a big player. And that's Luis Suarez. Um, I was watching Suarez playing last night in uh, their victory over Atletico Madrid. And as I was sort of saying a couple of days, I was saying yesterday, sorry, um, you look at him when he played at Liverpool and everything went through him. He was the main man. He was the the head on show at the club. You know what I mean? He was the go-to player in the club. At Real, uh, sorry, at Barcelona, sorry, Barcelona, he is not the go-to man at Barcelona. The go-to man is Messi. After Messi, you know, um, you know, there's other players, a host of other players. So, you know, Neymar, you know, many other players in the team, Iniesta, he is not the main man at Barcelona. And it seems to be affecting his game. I mean, I was watching him play last night. Usually Luis Suarez working really hard, but you could see frustration on him. Lots and lots of frustration on him. Um, in <laughs> going back to some of his little antics and stuff like that, going over pretty easily and that. But lots and lots of um, um, frustration from what I can see from the last few times I've seen him playing for Barcelona. And there's a lot of people linking him with a move away in the summer and... Um, what the suitors are saying is that Arsene Wenger would still love to get Luis Suarez in at Arsenal, but um, that's going to be one definitely for the summer, I think. Um, player that's been linked throughout the window has been uh, Mattia Destro. We're hearing that Destro um, is almost certain to be joining AC Milan. Destro was linked with a, with a move at Arsenal. They have been looking at him, Arsenal, definitely. I would have thought it's strange that they bring him in in the January transfer window. I really did, um, because of the fact that you know we've let Joel Campbell go. Out. We've got other strikers. He seems to be putting his faith in Welbeck, putting his faith in Giroud. Also, you've got Young Atpom coming through, and we've sent a striker in Yaya Sanogo also out on loan. Why would we be bringing in Destro? It seems strange, but looks like Destro's going to be anyway on his way to AC Milan. And the last guy, do you remember this guy? <laughs> do you all remember this guy? He used to be the player that was seen as our answer to our defensive midfielder problems. He was described as the, the new Claude Makaleli. He's been going all over the place from club to club to club, and that's Jan Mavia. He's now at Inter Milan. Um, he's come out recently and said he'd love a move to the Premier League. He'd love to go to Arsenal. Um, I don't think Arsenal, he's missed the boat on that move. I don't think um, Arsene Wenger is no longer interested in, in um, bringing in Mavia to the club. But remember Mavia, you know, he, 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 was, he was on everybody's lips um, at one time. But um, I don't think that one will be happening anytime soon. Let's get a quick look at uh, some of the comments that you guys um, had yesterday. Um, you see here, Harry Riker says, Suarez, 65 million to Barcelona six months ago. Arsenal have a history of um, exuberant spending such money, and I'm in including Ozil and Sanchez in that. Moreover, we had an opportunity in place, um, opportunity to place a correct bid for Suarez when he was younger and at a club that um, didn't have the ability to hold on to him. So he doesn't seem to think um, that that is a deal that will happen. 
Um, lots of people still going on about um, the, the Jack um, debate. Um, Jay Antonio says, I could imagine how peed off Liverpool fans would be if Suarez was to come to Arsenal, especially over the whole Alexis, after the whole Alexis Sanchez thing. Um, rap flips, he, he, he comes out and he says, Robbie, stop this. This is ridiculous. We ain't going to sign Suarez. Listen, all I'm doing is reporting the rumours that are out there. The rumours that if you pick up every single paper today, if you go to every internet site today, they are all reporting the rumour and the gossip and the link that Luis Suarez is being linked with a move to Arsenal. That's all I'm reporting. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Sometimes I say these things and there's some people out there who say, Robbie, what are you talking about? You ain't going to happen. Listen, it, it's not going to happen in January, no way. If he became available in the summer, I have no doubt, I don't think, that Arsenal would be looking at um, bringing somebody like Suarez in if the price was right. So you can never say never on a deal like this. And I can understand why you're seeing all the links, because as I said, he looks a frustrated um, figure there. And if it came down for me, to buying Suarez and buying Cavani, right? They'd be around about the same sort of prices. I know what player that um, I'd be going for. Uh, let's get one more here. Ross James says, if we could get Suarez for £55 million max, again, that's about the same price they're talking about for Cavani. He said, then get him. But over that price is way too much for us to spend on one player, especially off the back of a poor season in Spain. Hasn't finished yet, so give him a little chance. Uh, which is an easier league to score in. As I said, he's not the main man there in Barcelona. Neymar, Messi, you know, there's Rakitic there. There's loads of players. They're all superstars there. And I don't know, I feel, I just get the feeling that Suarez operates better when he's that main sort of superstar figure. But we can only dream. Suarez, Sanchez in one team. Ozil, oh my gosh, Cozola. That would be some team if we could make that happen. But as I said... At this stage, only rumours, but it's all over the place. Thanks for watching Transfer Daily. We'll be back tomorrow with more rumours.